I bet you all know already that erythropoiesis is the production of red blood cells. And I bet you also know that red cells, of course, their primary job in the body is to carry oxygen and to deliver oxygen to tissues. So erythropoiesis occurs primarily in the bone marrow. It can also occur in the spleen and liver, especially in cases where the body needs more red cells. And the bone marrow is influenced to make red cells by erythropoietin, which we abbreviate EPO. And EPO is produced by and secreted by the kidney, uh, specifically the renal cortical epithelial cells. And this happens as a normal occurrence, and it is increased the production of EPO when you have decreases in oxygen. And this most commonly happens with anemia, decreases in inspired oxygen, such as being at a high altitude or even heart failure where you have poor circulation. And all of these result in an increase in EPO and then increased erythropoiesis, which we're going to talk more about. So this is a schematic of erythropoiesis. And production of red cells uh, starts out just like all types of hematopoiesis as this kind of uncommitted stem cell, uncommitted progenitor. And we're not going to talk any more about that. Uh, the first cell that we recognize when we look in the bone marrow is being erythroid as a rubroblast, and you don't have to know what these early guys look like. And a rubroblast eventually matures to become a mature red blood cell, and that takes approximately five days. So as this maturation happens, you can see that red cells, they get smaller, they lose their nucleus, and they go from blue to red. And that's due to hemoglobin. And this occurs due to four divisions, which allows for an increase in number of red cells as each of these cells actually divides. And these divisions will become important later because it actually determines the eventual size of the red blood cell. And when we look in the periphery, uh, we mostly see these mature red blood cells, but we also look for um, in states of anemia, this cell line that's right before, and these are called polychromatophilic red blood cells because they're blue. It's not the best writing, sorry. Um, polychromatophilic red blood cells, and their other name are reticulocytes. And so reticulocytes are equivalent to polychromatophilic red blood cells, and we can actually see these on our CBC, and it tells us what's happening in the bone marrow. An increase in these would correspond to a bone marrow response and increased erythropoiesis, which we term in the bone marrow erythroid hyperplasia, and that's an appropriate response. And if a bone marrow didn't respond, or if there was bone marrow disease causing a lack of production of red blood cells, that's called erythroid hypoplasia. So the next video, um, depending on the order that you watch them, it's actually going to talk all about reticulocytes um, and how we use reticulocytes in all species except the horse uh, when we look at CBCs to tell us if an animal is responding appropriately or not responding if they're actually anemic.